and set the book on its journey. This is indeed a very special occasion for us as our beloved Shipra auntie has worked very hard and beautifully captured on lens many of our special abilities and some of the most touching moments of our life. Through her book, The Light Within, she has revealed to the world that we, the special children of God, may not be able to see like the rest, but then do not necessarily live in darkness, as many would imagine. Our minds are filled with colors and unusual imagination, and we can achieve the impossible through the power of our thoughts and strength of our will. Shipra Auntie has tried to showcase many of the positive aspects of our lives and the many things we are able to achieve through our special gifts of intuition, sound, smell, touch, and a strong will. We do not need to blame our fate, for we have the power within us to change our destiny. This world needs more people like Shipra auntie. She loves her, we love her because she does not pity us and understands us and appreciates us. She also encourages us to succeed in life. We wish her every success and hope that this book becomes an inspiration for many. We hope this book opens the inner eyes of the people who have been blessed by God with a gift of sight. We are honored to release this book in the presence of this distinguished gathering and present the first copy of the book to the Honorable President. Thank you. I shall take this opportunity now to read out a short message conveyed by Sri S. Paul, ex-chief photographer, the Indian Express, Jansatta, New Delhi. The message. When we imagine the lives of blind people, we see only darkness around them. But when I saw a photo exhibition by Shipra Das some years back, it opened my blind eyes that now skillfully these people did all sorts of personal and professional work assigned to them. Shipra Das photographed each situation at various places of India with her mind's eyes open and brought the unknown and the invisible out in the open. I promptly conveyed to Mr. Arun Puri, the editor-in-chief of India Today, who was present there, that this project will go into history. The result is a great and a very meaningful book, The Light Within, which touches the soul. So many coffee table books have been published on cities, states, and on India itself. But here is a book that makes good sense and draws the nation's attention. That's all. <clears throat> May I now request our Honorable President of India, Sri Pranab Mukherjee, to address this August gathering. It's indeed a pleasure for me to be present amidst you this evening on this beautiful function when this unique publication, The Light Within, brought out by Ms. Sipradas, is released by two visually impaired persons, and I had the privilege of receiving the first copy of it. I congratulate Sipra for doing this unique and wonderful work. I would like to suggest the portal of some outstanding members of our society who, though sightless, have been able to even such amazing personal victories which has been depicted by 
Miss Sipra Das through the lens of her camera. They are standing examples of hope and perseverance. Their triumph over daunting disadvantages proves that any goals can be achieved against all odds as long as we approach them with courage, conviction, determination, and faith in ourselves. Reading through this book, I was struck by the optimistic note of the small children, men, women, young and old, featured within this title. I found that so many of them talked about an ability to see beyond what is visible and apparent, to see with their hearts, rely upon an inner vision, and make an emotional contact with those that they interact with in a way that is almost magical and miraculous. I was amazed to read about Anand, the coconut picker, who confidently climbs coconut trees and harvests more coconuts than other normal boys. Vishal Rao, congenitally blind, managed to graduate in political science. He plays the flutes, violin, and can weave a fisherman's net. Kanchan Pamani, who has an independent law firm and advises clients on diverse, complicated legal methods, from common litigation to intellectual property rights and consumer rights. One Kanchan Mala Pandey, who dreams of crossing the English Channel, these are just some of the achievers featured in this comfortable book. I was sad to see that so many of them, those interviewed, have faced exploitation at home and outside. Some had difficulty in getting bank loans only because they could not see. One young man in Odisha had his entire share of the family's agricultural land user by his own uncle and the family's agricultural land usurped by them. He was put to destination, destitutes. Today the same boy, Nimai, has reclaimed his rightful share of the property, cultivated it, produces enough to support himself. Way back in 1916, Gurudev Ravindranath Tagore, as he gave a lecture in the Kyoguzuki University in Japan, he talked about a different kind of vision. He described it as I quote, the mental sense by the help of which we feel the spirit of people. Those who have not this vision merely see events and facts and not their inner association." Unquote. In that sense, many of us, perhaps most, we cannot see, despite the blessings of sight in our eyes, a God-given gift that we take it for granted. It is often thought that perhaps the sightless can see beyond the obvious and perceive things in a more profound way than others do. Throughout the history of human civilization, there had been a belief 
that the blind possesses the visions of the inner eyes. Greek mythology abounds with blind prophets who could see into the futures. Egyptian tombs have carvings of the blind harpists who could communicate with gods. Ancient Israel had revealed its learned blind men who had exceptional powers. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind, say the Hebrew scriptures. In Armeni, a branch of the Semitic language, the word for blind, sagi naha, means great light. This deeper vision, illuminated by the inner conscience, is the theme of Sipradas's book, Light Within. While generally photographers deal with that real world, capturing images, it is the photographer's mind that actually portrays an object or a person in its fullness. And I am happy to see that Shipra has brought to us such a remarkable frames in her deeply perceptive publication. Sipradas has given us an insight into the world of the individuals that she has photographed, interacted, and written about the realities of their daily lives and routines, their triumphs and tribulations. I also noted that the blind heroes featured in her book do not consider themselves to be extraordinary in any way, though they are. Yet, it is remarkable how they make their way through the world as they perceive it with creativity and cheerful resilience. They are calm and philosophical and almost inured in their sightlessness. I was particularly struck by the simplicity of their approach and their intuitive understanding of the world around them. This publication will definitely make the reader more conscious of the tremendous capabilities of the sightless. Their experiences will no doubt give inspiration to not only those with similar challenges, but also to those of us who would like to reach out to help the people like them. I call upon all sections of the society, especially the youngest generations in schools and technical engineering institutions to look at the ex experiences of the kind of brave people featured in this book and be motivated to also contribute innovative and technical solutions that can be applied to their daily lives. We can make the visually challenged even more comfortable and enhance their capabilities to participate in the different sectors of our socio-economic development. I would also like to felicitate Sri Vikas Nyogi for his role in publishing this wonderfully conceived work. To each of those who are featured in this book, I offer my congratulations for their commendable guard and perseverance. Theirs is an example of the power and the spirit, indomitable spirit of the Prince of Creature that is human being. I once again congratulate Ms. Shipra Das and wish her, wish her success in our work for the future projects. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Jai Hind.